Hi guys, Happy New Year. I hope you had a good festive season, a good Christmas and a good New Year's Eve, wherever you may have been. Um, I was quite busy over the New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day period. I was uh, filming in Hanoi and uh, hopefully you got a chance to see the, the Christmas video uh, that I filmed before that and also the New Year's Eve video showing the fireworks in Hanoi. I got a prime spot on top of a, one of our partners um, in Hanoi, just, uh, just on the outskirts of the old quarter. So I got a great view of the fireworks. So if you haven't seen that video yet, do click on the, uh, the link below in the description. You'll see a little uh, video of that now. Fantastic fireworks and the first since 2016. So it was, uh, it was well, well worth the wait, really good. So um, first of all, I'd just like to thank all those people who've subscribed recently. Thank you so much, that's brilliant. I think we're up to 275 or so at the moment. It's a uh, very, very small amounts, but uh, we really appreciate it anyway. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do click on the subscribe button below and click the, no the bell for notifications too, so that you know when the new videos come up. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a few snippets of news that I've found throughout the week. Um, something that may be of interest, something uh, not, ex not exactly good news, not exactly terrible news, but uh, you know how it is at the moment. We're hoping 2021 uh, starts off well and continues throughout the year. So hopefully the borders open for Vietnam uh, to you. Um, first of all, um, it has been reported that uh, the first case of the new variant of COVID-19 has hit Vietnam shores. It was a 44-year-old lady who came from the UK, uh, returning back to Vietnam uh, and heading back to Me the Mekong. She was uh, tested positive just recently, uh, 20th of December she arrived and so tested positive uh, just after that. And so she's just uh, in hospital at the moment. She's been suffering high blood pressure over the years, so she's still okay. She's in a stable state. But this has now caused um, a problem with uh, international flights coming in. The Prime Minister was requested to suspend all commercial international flights from those countries that have the new variant. You can tell them in the garden. Um, the, uh, basically, the, the countries that have the new variant uh, will, uh, will not be able to enter Vietnam. This is what the Ministry of Health were requesting. Uh, on yesterday, the Prime Minister has agreed to this. And initially, U the UK and South Africa have been denied entry into Vietnam, uh, any flights coming in. And the Ministry of Health and uh, Foreign Affairs and Transport are working together to work up to drop draw up the list of people of countries that are now going to be suspended from entering Vietnam and those flights were mainly for uh, foreign experts investors business people and professionals who were coming in for to help boost the economy slightly for Vietnam um, you know so that's uh, that's kind of a bit of bad news. I mean, the, the new variant is, is saying it's 70% more uh, contagious. So, you know, Vietnam are just being careful, being uh, cautious. And so they're closing off that, that route into Vietnam. And talking of COVID, the uh, nano-COVAX uh, uh, vaccine has been performing human trials since uh, mid-December. Uh, they are going seem to be going well. There's been a few, I think 50 to 75 percent of the people who've taken the uh, vaccine have had slight side effects, only uh, uh, slight fevers um, and a little bit of pain on injection apparently. So it's not, um, you know, it's not all plain sailing as you can imagine. So it's, it's doing okay. Um, there's also uh, a second vaccine, um, Covivac, which is now going to be coming into play later this month. They have been testing on the animals, uh, mice, rabbits and uh, monkeys for the last six months I believe and so now they're looking at uh, performing human trials by the end of January. Um, so that's, that's another positive note for an indigenous uh, vaccine in Vietnam. So we're hoping that 
does well and we have a couple of options. There are two other vaccines in, in progress but not uh, anywhere near the human trial stage I believe. So with these two vaccines on the way, um, the Oxford vaccine and Sputnik in Russia and, and numerous others, um, it's, it's looking bright. Um, away from Covid for now, this is all bad news. Um, I had bad news this, this week as well, a, a friend of mine died, so i um, not very happy about that. Um, so we'll move on to some better news. Um, down in Da Nang, the uh, People's Council of the city have de decided that this year, the full year of 2021, um, they will uh, scrap entrance fees for a few different uh, landmarks, sightseeing places. So uh, the, the places that are going to be uh, scrapped, uh, their um, entrance fees will be the Marble Mountains, and the um, Museum of Fine Arts and Cham, Cham Sculptures. <laughs> it's not that early. The, the chickens are bloody going mental, but it's not that early. It's about nine o'clock, I think. Is it nine o'clock? 9.30. Their, their alarm system is way, well, well out of whack. But anyway, uh, back, to the, back to the news. Um, there are other attractions in Da Nang that are free anyway. I mean, we walk along the beach. I mean, the beach is so long, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, and the, and the white sandy uh, feel to it as well. It's, it's soft to the touch, it's great, great beach. It's vast, you know, miles long. That's a place you can go without spending any money. You just sit on the beach all day there. But there's also uh, places like Lin Ung Pagoda, where the, you may see it, you, you can see it from the beach. It's a huge structure of a, um, a the, the pagoda isn't, but the, there is a white lady stood perched on the on the uh, outskirts on the peninsula that you can see from the beach you can go there for free if you ride a bike there though you 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 are expected to pay a donation but you can pay whatever you want i mean i i paid on the way out because i wanted to see what it was like and it was a fantastic place so i paid a little bit more because of that i think the gardens and the, uh, the, the just the whole surrounding and the views from there spectacular so there are other places that are free to, to enter in, in Da Nang, but uh, these three extra ones will hopefully boost the domestic and international tourism when it, when it arrives um, in the future. So that's uh, a little bit of better news. Um, one thing that uh, I've, I've picked up on this week is um, news of Vietnam being a retirement place. Now there is a, an international living magazine which publishes each year a, um, an index of um, foreign uh, ab uh, retiring abroad. Um, I'd, I'd never thought of Vietnam as a, a place to retire to, um, but you know, it, it is up there in the rankings. It, out of 25 countries, it is now uh, in the top 10. Um, the, the score that they got was 75 and a half out of 100, which is pretty good. Um, they scored over a varying amount of different uh, uh, subjects such as uh, cost of living, uh, entertainment, uh, what else was the healthcare, climate, um, and also benefits, housing and, and concessions. Now, Vietnam, if you've been, you'll know cost of living, just, just by traveling here, is, it's cheap. You know, I mean, just last this week I've been filming in Hanoi and you know, thirty thousand for a thirty thirty five thousand for a bowl of soup, which is a pound. It's uh, you know, it, it's crazy. It's, you can eat and you can drink very cheaply here, um, and living here is very cheap as well. So the cost of living was scored very high. I think it was ninety nine out of hundred. And I I can give first hand um, thoughts on that living here in Vietnam. Anyway, uh, living in the village is slightly different. It's going to be. <laughs> A lot cheaper anyway we just get our food from the market rather than uh, you know a big supermarket but um, we do visit the supermarket sometimes and spend a bit there but that's the luxury items that we uh, that we require just uh, not needed so cost of living uh, for example we were living in Hanoi for, for a few years um, the last place that we were in was a three-bedroom house um, no views or anything, you know, it was in, in amongst the suburb, uh, suburb of uh, Hanoi in Long Bien district and we were paying $550 per month 
for that. So three three bedroom house, five hundred fifty dollars. The electric was oh what was it about ten pence per unit. The gas I think we paid around ten pounds per month or maybe six weeks. A gas canister would last. There's, there's no uh, you know direct gas uh, plumbed in. So um, water again I think it was about a hundred thousand per month. You know, literally uh, nothing. 100,000 is like three pounds, just over three pounds. So the cost of living in Vietnam is relatively low, very low. So there's things like that that could persuade you maybe to retire to Vietnam. But to be honest, there are other things that uh, may not score very well and they didn't score very well. And that was uh, benefits. There's no benefits here. Uh, concessions. I've seen concessions for older folks uh, at sightseeing places, you know, like Koalo Prison, which uh, I filmed last week, um, and other items, but they're not the concessions that you probably get in the UK or the US or in Europe, Australia. Um, so things like that, but with the cost of living so low, you don't expect concessions, to be honest. Um, the other thing that they scored poorly was, um, what was it, what was it, what was it? Ah, uh, visas. Yeah, visas are one of the strictest. It's one of the strictest countries in uh, Asia for visas. You um, tend to get a tourist visa. Um, a lot of people who live here get a three-month uh, tourist visa uh, and just keep, re you know, extending and extending. A lot of people I know in Thailand have been doing that for years, month on, month off. You know, um, there are other types of visas, but they're they're not strictly. Uh, legal, such as a business visa, that has come a come a problem, come a cropper with some people over the last couple of years trying to work on the business visa and ended up getting kicked out of the country. Um, so there are different types of visas, but to be honest, uh, a retirement visa, I don't, I haven't really heard of such a thing. So that's one thing that's going to be the downfall is being able to live here freely without messing about going on visa runs and you don't want to be doing that in your 60s and 70s okay so now down to my thoughts um, now originally I, I, I was I was suggesting that March April was a great time to come and visit Vietnam due to the weather you know there's not so much rain and it's, uh, it's it's great all the way through nice it's a bit cooler up in the north as well um, but after seeing the news and uh, reading up on the vaccines and everything, you know, it, it's it's become more clear that uh, it's not just the people who are travelling that will need the vaccine, but it's also the place that they're going to that will need the vaccine. Um, this has kind of dampened our spirits a bit, you know, because we thought, you know, this year would be the year that we could at, at least start to take on business again uh, for foreign tourists. But with that, you know, I mean, Vietnam has a, about 95, 96 million people uh, as a population. The UK apparently have uh, vaccinated about 1.3 million as of yesterday, which is great. But uh, they've got a long way to go and they're in, and you guys, you know, you're all in a pretty strict lockdown at the moment. I've even had an email from uh, one of my clients, Kevin, I've got your email. Um, suggesting uh, coming in October and um, that is a great time to come I just hope that uh, vaccines have been delivered to uh, the whole of Vietnam and to the whole of the country that you're coming from and that that for me is is what's going to dampen uh, this year's uh, projections I do think though that September October will be a good time uh, October November will be the better time to come to Vietnam um, due to come at that time though in the central regions you've got the rainy season so that, that's you know you've got to weigh up your your options whether you're going through the central region or not but uh, for me the um, best time is October for the north it's, it's cooler a little bit cooler um, and there's not so much rain um, but you know with these vaccines uh, it's taking so long to get them delivered that maybe October is not even going to be on the cards anymore. We don't know. I'm just just offering my thoughts. Um, if you know we're unable to open the border for Vietnam in October, then yeah, hopefully Christmas, a nice Christmas present, will be nice for all of you to come. I'll take you around Christmas Street personally. I won't charge you. I'll just go. I'll just get a couple of beers from you. 
Um, and then obviously, uh, hopefully there'll be another New Year's Eve uh, fireworks display. New Year's fireworks display. Um, that's always good to see. Um, so, yeah, my thoughts are perhaps not the summer I was expecting people to come into Vietnam. So uh, maybe October onwards. So on that score, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Click like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. And I'll catch you on the next time. Cheers.